It's a new year, which means it's a brand new Home Assistant release, which is of course 2025.1. And this month sees improvements to the automation editor, granular graphs, more or less exposure, and backups of all the things. This release has quite a few big improvements to the way backups work in Home Assistant. Firstly, there is a new backup wizard, which is gonna help you to set up all of these brand new features included in this release. If you head over to settings, system and backups, right up at the top, you're going to see a prompt to configure the new backup experience. Hit that prompt and it's gonna take you through the process where we will see our next big feature, which is encryption by default. Previously, backups could optionally have a password set, but now as of this release, all backups will have an enforced encryption key set on them. You'll see once you get to this stage in the wizard that a backup key is automatically generated and displayed on screen where you can copy it to the clipboard or download it as a file. I'd recommend keeping this key somewhere very safe, probably in your password manager where it's gonna be nice and secure, but also available at any time. Make sure to not lose this key as it will be required anytime you need to restore a backup. When you press next, it will ask you if you want to set recommended settings or custom settings. And I'm just gonna select custom settings for the sake of showing you the other options, but do feel free to choose recommended if you are unsure. Next is where another big feature comes in and that is automatic backups, which is amazing. This screen lets you change the backup frequency from either every day or a specific day of the week. And you can also configure how many backups you want to keep before they get overwritten. I do wish that the time was configurable here. I'm not quite sure why that's not a thing, but maybe that will come in future releases. But overall, this is a really great addition. On the next screen, you can then configure what you want to back up, either just Home Assistant itself, add-ons, media, or a mixture of everything. Finally, on the last screen, we see the last big feature where you can select where you want to back up to, either the local disk, a NAS backup location if you have one configured, or Home Assistant Cloud, which is a brand new perk if you are a Nabu Casa subscriber, where you can now get five gigabytes of backup space included, which is really nice. And that is a little bonus for keeping a backup offsite. It also makes sense as to why all backups are fully encrypted by default now, as they're gonna be stored in Home Assistant Cloud if you want to. Finally, you might be wondering if you'll ever see any other backup locations listed here. And the answer is hopefully yes because as of this release, the backup system is now extensible, meaning it should be possible for other integrations to now use this backup system and let you choose to backup to them. For example, to a Google Drive integration. There aren't any integrations that offer this as of yet, since this is a brand new release, but hopefully those will come in future updates. All in all, some huge upgrades for the backup system in Home Assistant, which is really, really cool to see. For what it's worth, you can also go in and download your encryption key, but you can also change your encryption key at any time in case of a security reason, for example. Just make sure to note where the old key stops to being used on your backup and where the new one starts to kick in. Once your backup completes, you will now get a quick summary on the backup dashboard of how everything is looking. Overall, this is a huge, huge improvement to the backup system with several great features, and it was possible to automate the backup process with automations in the past, but now that it's done so easily in the backup dashboard and it's all kind of natively built in, this is a very welcome change to the user experience, especially for beginners. Next, we have lots of improvements in this release from month of what the heck, where regular users like you and me could submit feature requests and bugs much more easily. And this month we get to see some of the fruits of the labor of month of what the heck. The first one is a nice quality of life improvement made to the history graph. If you now open up the UI and look at a graph, either through the more info dialogue or in the history panel, 
graphs can now be zoomed in on and panned around, which is really cool if you have a sensor that updates very frequently and you need to get more granular to see what happened at a specific point in time. Very cool. Another neat little addition from Month of What The Heck is personally one of my favorites and it's being able to control the default behavior of new entities to voice assistants like Assist or Google. If you head over to the voice assistants dashboard, you'll notice that there is a new toggle button for exposing new entities. This allows you to control if when you add a new device to Home Assistant, if it will automatically expose all of the entities to Assist or if it does not do that, which if you have a big install, I think this is a really great little option as it can quickly expose a huge number of entities to assist, which in turn can, can cause it to control the wrong devices and get a little bit mixed up. So I would recommend turning this off if you have a large install to help with that issue. Another month of what the heck feature is a new dialogue that appears when you save an automation. You'll notice that you can now add an area, category or label right from the save dialogue alongside description, which was there in previous releases, instead of having to save it and then go back in and add your label or category after. It can all just be done as you are saving the automation now. Nice. There is also a new shortcut for accessing devices from any page. So some of you might be aware that if you hit the E key on your keyboard, it will search for entities, or you can hit the C key on your keyboard to navigate to different pages and settings. But in this release, you can now hit D on your keyboard, which will let you quickly navigate to a device page, which I personally really, really like. Cool little improvement there. And on a similar theme, you can also hit A on your keyboard to instantly bring up assist for voice, which makes so much sense. Some final month of what the heck improvements include Home Assistant and will now ask to save an automation change if you exit the automation without saving it first. Some options in filters can now be searched like labels, devices and entities if you have a large list and you want to quickly narrow them down. Additional context is now available in sentence triggers to further expand your automation capabilities. And last but not least, you can now rearrange individual devices on the energy dashboard to suit your needs. Finally, for the little stuff, the tile card now supports a volume slider as a feature for quick volume control on your dashboard. If you have a background image on your dashboard, there are now configurable options for opacity, size, alignment, and repeat options. Pressing Ctrl F in your browser on certain pages will now automatically focus to the search box on the page. And finally, the SwitchBot integration now has support for the SwitchBot Relay and SwitchBot Leak Detector. As for new integrations this month, there is eight new integrations joining Home Assistant in this release. And we have one new integration available to set up in the UI instead of via YAML. In terms of breaking changes, we have a very small list this month. The only thing I can see that might be popular with you would be the Unify one, which has some of the sensors changed to standardized names. Mostly it's just a capitalization change, but if you use any of these sensors in your automations or scripts, you'll need to change the automation to reflect the new change in the names. And as always, do make sure to have a read of the breaking changes for yourself to make sure nothing else applies to you. And that's about it for the first release of this year. The backup stuff is a really, really solid addition to the first release, and it makes it feel like a properly complete backup system now, which I love. It's also really cool that they made it available for other integrations to hook into so that we can back up to other platforms. I think that will open up a ton of possibilities. Also a lot of really nice quality of life stuff coming from a month of what the heck too. So a lot of good feature suggestions and a lot of features implemented, which is awesome. I'd love to hear your favorite new features down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.